This month's question comes from Bill, an electrician with a busy and successful business in the Indianapolis area, and he asks, can I pay myself rent for the business use of my home office? I have a corporation and I conduct all of my accounting and management operations out of my home. I have your answer, Bill. Watch this video to learn more. Welcome to this episode of Accounting and Tax Tips, Smart Strategies for Small Business Success with Certified Public Accountant, Tina Mo. Bill, what you're referring to is considered self-rent, and it's a common type of arrangement where a closely held corporation, or S-corporation, pays rent to its shareholder employee for the use of home-based office space. However, this is also an area of increased scrutiny by the IRS because these types of arrangements are typically an area of non-compliance. A shareholder who pays themselves rent uh, takes money out of their business in a form other than wages or corporate distributions, and they do so without paying the related taxes. So what do you need to do to get compliant and still maximize the opportunity? First, you should support your home office rental arrangement with information from uh, a reliable source to determine the market value on the designated space. You may want to contact maybe a local real estate broker or a property management company, and they can help you determine uh, what a reasonable amount of rent would be for this space. Next, you should have a written lease between you and your corporation to support this agreement. The rent paid by the corporation is deductible by the corporation and the shareholder employee uh, reports the rent received on Schedule E and deducts a portion of their mortgage interest, uh, property taxes, and casualty losses if applicable. Unfortunately, the shareholder employee won't be able to deduct other expenses such as repairs and maintenance and depreciation. I should mention, Bill, that there are a few other options that you might want to consider before looking at this option and entering into a lease with your corporation. You may want to possibly consider uh, a reimbursement of expenses. Um, so here's how that works. Your corporation can reimburse you, the shareholder employee, for home office expenses that are related to the business. You must have an agreement in writing with the corporation and you must keep adequate documentation on the expenses. In addition to that, the home office must meet the test of regularly and exclusively used for business and for the convenience of the corporation. If all of these tests are met, then the corporation reimburses the shareholder employee for um, the home office related expenses. In turn, these expenses are deducted as a business expense uh, for the corporation and they are tax-free as a reimbursement to the shareholder employee. This is referred to as an accountable plan reimbursement, but a word of warning, Bill, if you choose this option, you can't deduct the business-related portion of your mortgage interest, real estate taxes, um, if your corporation is reimbursing you for them. In the world of taxation, we call this double dipping because you would be deducting these amounts on both your Schedule A, which reports itemized deductions, as well as receiving a tax-free reimbursement from your corporation. The IRS typically frowns on double dipping of this kind, so beware. And Bill, one last word of advice. If you're going to go the reimbursement route, be sure the reimbursement is actually made by the end of the tax year for it to qualify as a corporate deduction. The corporation can't just owe you the money, it has to physically be paid to you by the end of the year. For more information on this and other tax and accounting related topics, visit my website at www.actservices-inc.com. Thank you for watching this episode of Accounting and Tax Tips with Tina Mo. For more great information, visit Tina's website at www.actservices-inc.com. Also browse the other shows found right here at Indie Biz TV Shows.